Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I am going to be giving you an introduction to my new 2x72 belt grinder. I was recently contacted by the same gentleman who reached out to me to sell me my first belt grinder, and he said that he had a Northridge belt grinder for sale. So I promptly jumped in my truck, drove to his location, and bought the belt grinder that you now see behind me. The goal of today's video is to go over some of the features of this belt grinder and give you a general introduction. This video is not a full and detailed review since I've only been able to use the belt grinder for a few weeks now. When I do give that review down the road, you will be happy to know that there is not a conflict of interest since I bought and paid for this grinder on my own. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the narration. First of all, this is a nice and beefy combo. The custom stand that he has made has a piece of three quarters of an inch plate on the bottom of it, and the grinder itself also has a significant amount of heft, which is what you want when dealing with two by 72 inch belt grinders. If you're looking to build a stand while waiting on your grinder to ship, the mounting holes for the Pro Series stand like you see here is eight and three quarters from front to back and eight inches from side to side. Once I have the grinder mounted onto the stand, I move it to my desired location and then put two three quarters of an inch horse stall mats under it, not only for a little bit of extra height, but also to kind of level it out a little bit on my concrete floor. In this section, we'll be going over some of the key features of the Northridge belt grinder. The tracking mechanism is nice and smooth and I've had no issues thus far with tracking belts on this machine. I will say that the belt used in this demonstration is a very worn 220 grit aluminum oxide belt and it really doesn't do the grinder justice on video. The tracking has been excellent both in the forward and the reverse modes on the VFD, which is a good sign that you have good tracking overall. One feature I really like about this 2x72 is the ratcheting belt tensioner. This tensioner allows you to make quick changes on your belts and also to vary the amount of tension that you want your belt to ride at. The teeth on the tensioner, to my understanding, are hardened tool steel, and the whole mechanism is a breeze to use. Some obvious attention to detail can be witnessed when looking at the tooling arm holders on the Northridge 2x72. They have a hardened steel puck placed in a piece of aluminum so that you have an aluminum to aluminum contact on your one and a half by one and a half tooling arms, this makes it so that you do not mar your tooling arms. This is one of the earlier versions of the rat arm, which is our rotary adjustable table, and this will be our work rest attachment for this grinder. The gentleman who I purchased this grinder from got some extra knobs, so we will be using these knobs on the rat arm attachment so that we don't have to have the Allen wrench handy all the time. What this will essentially do is give me the ability to make quick angle changes uh, on both the main sections of the rat arm attachment. So I'll be testing this out in the coming weeks and we'll see how it does. The two work rests that come from Northridge are quarter inch thick and they are also nitrated. So that's why they have that nice black color there. You can also purchase some additional mounting brackets that can be used to make new tool rest for this rat arm. You'll see me making a new tool rest later on in this video with one of those additional brackets. What you just saw there was how easy it is to alternate between work rest in this rat arm attachment and the smaller mini work rest here I think will actually become fairly useful. You can see that the work rest is usable in both the vertical and the horizontal position. Arguably one of the coolest features about this Northridge 2x72 is the ability to 
easily turn horizontal with this gas shock in the back of the system. You can see that when I disengage the catch, the shock will hold the entire weight of the grinder and then I will push down on the grinder gently in order to get it to lock in the horizontal position. The same can be said when disengaging the grinder, the shock will push it up and then you can push gently to get it to lock in the vertical position. I'm not sure if this is standard on a new Northridge grinder, but the one that I purchased has it wired up so that I can go in both forward and reverse. The reverse feature can be very nice when working in a garage setting so that I can make sure to send all my handle material out of the garage instead of into the garage to make it all dusty. The tracking works very well in both directions. Another slick feature on this grinder is the ability to screw in an optional ledge on the bottom of your flat platen. This will allow some support if you decide to install a ceramic platen onto your grinder. Once again, I think this is just a very nice little attention to detail that is obvious with the construction of the Northridge grinder. In this section, we will be fabricating a work rest for an 8 inch contact wheel in the horizontal position. I had a standard Origin Blade Makers work rest that I figured would be nice to repurpose for this grinder. First thing I did was measure out the center lines, both horizontally and lengthwise, on this work rest and then cut out the rough shape of my wheel. I then used the wheel itself to clean up my cuts and got on to drilling the holes that are required to mount my mounting bracket that I had extra with my purchase of the grinder. You can purchase these mounting bracket additions from Northridge and make as many work rests as you please. I drilled four holes three quarters of the way through the work rest and then tap these holes to accept the mounting bracket hardware. Once you have these holes drilled and tapped and the bracket attached to your work rest, the only thing left to do is to cut a section of three quarters of an inch stainless so that you can attach the work rest and bracket to the rat arm. I cut off a piece of stainless here and then used a grinder with some fences set up on the work rest to get nice finishes on the ends of my three quarters of an inch stainless bar. What I didn't show here was I actually took down a little bit of the OD of this bar on my slack belt on the top of the grinder so that it could fit into the mounting bracket and also into the rat arm. As you just saw, I had a pretty tight fit on the mounting bracket and I actually took down the OD a little bit more after that clip. But yeah, this is how it turned out and I think I'll be using this thing a bunch. The next section is gonna be my dust collection installation next to the grinder. I got this idea from Simple Little Life. He installed this same dust collection system in his shop and seemed to really like it. So I decided to give it a go. What you see me doing here is taking a piece of scrap and making a little mounting plate out of it so that I can increase the surface area contacting the plastic mounting bracket that comes with the system. As you can see here, I have a lot of play in this plastic bracket. So in order to take up some of this play, we're gonna make a mount that will hopefully hold the plastic bracket to the work station. So I'll take a piece of wood, drill four holes in it, and run a zip tie through the center so that I can mount this piece of wood to the wooden workstation and then use the zip tie to secure the plastic bracket. This zip tie did a great job at shearing it up. However, I think I can do better with a metal pipe clamp. So I'll be giving that a shot in the coming weeks and hopefully the pipe clamp will be a little bit more rigid. So here are some shots of this thing sucking up some dust when connected to my shop back. You can see that the articulating arm makes it easy to get in pretty much all the different areas that you would need it to. One drawback is the initial kit comes with two feet of hose, so I ordered an additional one footer, which made it way nicer to use in the area that I mounted it. I may not leave it in that spot, but I will definitely play around with it in this location for a while. So as we're nearing the end of this belt grinder introduction, I wanted to mention three things. The first thing is that these wheels are machined by Northridge and they are billet aluminum. The drive wheel is a five inch, the tracking wheel is four inches, and the platen wheels are two inches. The second thing is that I'm fairly sure every component on this machine is machined and manufactured in the United States. So if that's important to you, uh, be rest assured that this is a USA made product. The third and final point that I wanted to reiterate about this machine is that it is obviously a precision made product. 
the rotation and pivot points are all enclosed so that dust cannot get into them. The squareness of the wheels to the attachments are very square. The attention to detail overall is just excellent and I'm really happy to put some hours behind this machine. But like all things, if I run into any major problems, you guys will be the first to know. So yeah, if you guys have stuck around this long, please hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. If you're looking to buy a 2x72 inch belt grinder, please tell me which one you're looking to buy in the comment section below and why you're thinking about it. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.